Welcome, friends, to our devotional study today through the book of Luke. I encourage you to come to Luke chapter 1. And uh, today we want to look at verses 34 through 38. We have seen that Gabriel has made the announcement that Mary is going to bring forth a son. And uh, that he is going to be the Messiah. He is going to be the Christ child, known as Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation. Now we want to see Mary's response to the message of the angel. And then how he responds to that that question, the questions that Mary asked. So with that in mind, let's come to Luke chapter 1. In verse 34, it says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her which was called bearing. Let me just pause there for a moment. That's how we know that uh, back in verse 26, it says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. That's how we know he's talking about the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. The best thing to do is compare scripture with scripture. Then it says in verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Notice Mary's response when Gabriel had said to her, Mary, you're going to bring forth a child. Verse 34, then said Mary unto the angel, Notice, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? In that particular passage, Mary is expressing her integrity. She is expressing her purity. She is very clearly here puzzled by the fact that she's wondering how in the world she is going to bring forth this child. She says, I do not know a man. Keep in mind what it said in verse 27, and, and this just confirms what is said in verse 27. It says that the angel came to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, sadly, many of the modern versions today change the word virgin to a young lady, and they are not doing this passage justice by doing that. It is of utmost importance that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. If he was not born of a virgin, and he had an earthly father and an earthly mother, then he is a sinful person, just like the rest of us, and he needs a Savior. But because Jesus did not have a human father, but a heavenly father, then he could be, and he is, the Son of God. So, there's a big difference between a virgin and a young lady. You know, every virgin, you know, can be a young lady, but not every young lady is a virgin. So, be careful about this idea of watering down the Word of God. Mary expresses her integrity here in verse 34, and she says, I do not know a man. In other words, Mary had never been married. She had never committed fornication. She had never had sexual relations with a man. And she's saying, how in the world am I going to bring forth a son if I'm not married and I've never had sexual relations with a man? And then the angel answers in verse 34, the angel, or verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Notice, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Bible makes it very clear in this passage that the Lord Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary by the Holy Ghost without the aid of a man. You know, in contrast to the, the pagan legends of antiquity concerning the reputed offspring of gods and men, there is no physical intervention here, uh, contrary to what mankind would try to teach. Um, with verse 35 in mind, let's just go back to Matthew chapter 1 and see what Matthew has to say about this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse. That word a spouse means betrothed. 
kind of like our engagement period, but more binding. We've already talked about that. To Joseph, notice this, before they came together, so before they were united and physically came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, and we're going to tie this in in just a moment. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Now, you need to study the Jewish system in order to understand what's going on here. But Joseph could make, you know, when, when, a, when somebody was betrothed and then they found out that the woman was with child or that there was fornication involved, um, that betrothal period could then be broke off. A bill of divorce could be written before they were officially married and came together. And there was one of two ways that could happen. And the only reason it could happen was because of fornication. And uh, the first thing he could do is make her a public example. He could call her out publicly and say that she'd been unfaithful and the punishment for that was stoning. Or if he didn't want to make her a public example, he could just privately and quietly put her away. And that's what verse 9 is talking about. Then it says in verse 20 of Matthew 1, notice what happens. But while he thought on these things, you know, thought about what he was going to do. And by the way, that's a wonderful thing to do. Before you act, think. Before you react, think about what you're doing. Think about what your options are. Think about what the repercussions are of what you're going to do. While he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. By the way, there's the third fear not, if you've been following them, in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ announcement. Fear not, we saw the other two in Luke 1, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, no this, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So we see very clearly there that not only does Mary declare her purity, but we also see that to Joseph, the angel declares the purity of Mary as well. And this one that's going to be born in her is not the son of a man, but is the son of God. And then verse 36, it says, Behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. What a miraculous announcement that must have been. Elizabeth is going to have a child in her old age. You know, old enough that most people would have thought that she was past the age of bearing children. But God shows just how powerful he is, as is described in verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And we're going to dig into that deeper tomorrow. But friends, that's where we need to live. We need to understand that nothing is impossible with our God. But notice the relationship here. It says, Behold thy cousin Elizabeth. So if Elizabeth and Mary were first cousins, then Jesus and John the Baptist were second cousins. And of course we know that John had a very specific purpose that he was called to. And that reminds us that uh, we need to do what it is that God wants us to do with our lives. Oh, there's so many miraculous things that we can learn as we study out the Word of God and as we allow the Holy Spirit of God to teach us, may it be our prayer every time we come into the Word of God, as it says in Psalm 119, I believe it's verse 18, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The psalmist sir, was not praying to learn new and wacky things that nobody else learned. He was just simply saying, Lord, teach me your Word as it really is. Help me to learn the lessons of the Word of God and help me to apply them to my life. And friends, that's where we should be. Help me to learn the lessons of the Word of God and to apply them to my life as a believer. And tomorrow we'll begin to look at the power of God in this passage and what Mary was willing to risk in order that she might do the will of God for her life. Have a great day, friends.